Hello all, I'm Mia, Office and Talent Manager here at Critical Force, and I'm here to give you an insight how we at Critical Force went from a regular day at the office to a sudden working from home. As a quick recap, uh, back in March, the coronavirus was spreading rapidly throughout the globe, and we were cautiously reviewing the situation day by day. We have freelancers working abroad, so we were concerned about the safety and well-being of our people. In mid-March, when the government in Finland recommended the companies to switch over to remote working, we acted immediately. And within one Friday and Saturday, we made a switch from the office to home. And while preparing all the actions for the working from home, we realized that this is an unprecedented situation where we need to put emphasis on our employees. We do not mind missing a deadline or two if it means that all our employees are safe and sound. So we planned three core areas to focus on. Technical competence and communication tools, work well-being and active caring to maintain safe, remote environment and mental well-being. Let's go briefly through what these activities were included in these key areas. Tech and comms. Everybody had in their home office set up all the tools and knowledge they need to operate and communicate with their teams. We have had distributed work already quite some time as we have a team members located not only here in Finland in two locations, but also Thailand, Korea, Japan, United States, Canada. So this ensured that our main processes were ready for lockdown. Of course, when basically the whole world goes to remote working at the same time, there can be some challenges. And we faced issues with our tech infrastructure, with our home internet providers, all sorts of little hiccups, which slowed the development, especially in the beginning. Also, for example, an artist, you do not simply want to move large game assets over the internet, especially if you cannot fully rely on your internet. So trust me, this, this wasn't all sunshine and sparkles. For many team members, it was their first time really doing remote work. And most didn't have any dedicated place in their homes to actually have the office set up. Also, moving everyone to home in just a few days, it was disruptive to development. Although now, in retrospect, we can say things went fairly smoothly due to collaboration of all teams. And that is also why we focused on the well-being. From, from the very first week, we had a virtual coffee break, so people uh, were able to have the social moment have the kind of like the office like uh, coffee environment where they can uh, well ventilate in case their internet sucked or talk freely about if they are having any any issues at all as we realized that these virtual coffee breaks were an excellent moment to actually hear from your team and uh, find out if there's something our admin and support teams can help them with People were also encouraged to have uh, remote lunches with their colleagues or going for a walk with the headphones on, just you know, listening to their meeting or so uh, without taking any notes, of course. And um, we allowed all the employees to use up to 45 minutes of their weekly working time to exercise. It started with an initiative to basically challenge our employees to go out and uh, walk in uh, fresh air, get some fresh air and record their weekly steps. So we get them to actually get the fresh air and uh, exercise a bit. And that initiative was so cherished that we were kind of forced to invent more such initi initiatives later on. Also, Within the first few weeks back in March, we drafted a quick self-help guide 
for both employees as managers so that everyone had access to some basic tools to maintain a healthy mental mindset. Active caring, however, means more than just presentations like on how to stay sane. We also offered employees a separate service where they can get individual counseling from professionals. And we have the Walking Ops initiative where, where you recorded the steps and uh, it was followed by all sorts of smaller campaigns. And now we have training ops, which means all exercise in general. And still we have that 45 minutes of the working time to spend on exercising. We wanted also pamper our employees a bit. So we made a deal with some selected suppliers to act as our Friday breakfast, Friday coffee and bun provider. So even now our employees can spend 15 euros a week to get some tasty treats from selected providers. We made care packages to our employees and uh, the first care package in April was actually delivered to everyone's doorstep. And then later on in summer, people were able to pick up their care package from the office. And we had face masks and uh, yeah, we had also, we had remote parties. We had some parties over Zoom. As the main priority was our employees. We planned all our actions and initiatives so that they would remain as positive as they possibly can in this prevailing situation. We wanted to guarantee that everyone would feel safe and secure and that they would be able to succeed and perform in both at work as in their daily life. However, considering remote work and the pros and cons, it always depends on the personal view. So this was the reason why we created a self-help guide. So that all from forming a routine and, and make a space to your working desk, basically, uh, for, to make employees understand that it's totally okay in this situation, it's totally okay to feel anxiety, to feel depression even, and how you can yourself regulate your thoughts and ground yourself so that you can aim to thrive through this pandemic. For managers and team leads, we emphasized the very basics of being a manager. During the spring, when everything was uncertain and every action became a threat of infection, it became important to focus on appropriate things and uh, see the results instead of uh, hours you worked and communicate with uh, certainty and clarity and on those specific communication platforms your team uses. Manager's role for us was very important. Communication suddenly just became more challenging and required more effort, which of course slowed the team down a bit. Our managers went an extra mile or two even from staying on the pulse, uh, uh, checking in with their team members frequently, uh, giving more responsibility and trust uh, giving clear guidelines while setting a good example by being present when needed, uh, acknowledging that uh, the fear and anxiety this situation can cause by showcasing basically that we are all in this together as a team. And also they did an amazing job in reminding how important those tiny exercise breaks are. And now, six months later, we are able to see the outcome of our actions. Many of us are still working from home, whereas some have returned to, to the office. Some work in a hybrid mode, a few days at the office, otherwise at home. 
So I cannot see that this all went to uh, super smoothly, like uh, unicorns prancing on meadows, as of course we faced a lot of challenges. This pandemic has separated many of our employees from their families as their families live abroad. We have a lot of foreigners who couldn't go and meet their families. Our employees suffered as the video communication cannot fully replace the uh, closeness that the work community brings. It cannot fully replace the face-to-face -face time with the friends, colleagues, family. And we have a lot of game developers who live alone. And when you live and work in the same studio apartment, the walls are truly closing in. And that can give you kind of like a very real a suffocating feeling even. But we wanted, with our actions, we wanted to showcase that for every negative, there's also a positive side. And that was also our aim, to help our employees to see the positive and try to push through the uncertainty, the, the fear, the, the anxiety by building their own mental tool set to tackle or to ease the troublesome that this prevailing situation caused. And considering the three key takeaway, the areas that we focused on, our takeaway is fairly clear. We will thrive through this pandemic with such excellence, we thought we were totally unable to reach in this kind of crisis. And we are far from being the best versions of ourselves, no way. But we have learned to be resilient. We have learned to be flexible. And we have tools that we can use to outperform yesterday. And this is how I see that we will thrive through this pandemic. Being flexible, learning your own ways of coping and community. Although we are far away from each other, we are still together. We are still a community. And I'm already <laughs> reaching my final note in the presentation, and that is we are hiring. And thank you so much. If you have any questions, as I'm clearly a bit ahead of my time, please ask any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Mia. A lot of questions will come. I see a lot of comments there on the on the stage. But um, there's, uh, can I ask you still, uh, can you say five numbers? We have a quiz going on from one to 20, five numbers. Five numbers. From one to 20, yeah, random. Uh, five, 12, 15, 20, 23. No, from 1 to 20. 1 to 20. Oh, two, two, one two. One more. Oh, one more. 19. Did I say 19. that already? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Let's look at the Q&A now. Uh, does working remotely mean it would be possible to work from another country? Uh, yes, it is possible to work from another country and we have freelancers uh, throughout the globe. But of course, uh, when it comes to uh, onboarding phase, we would uh, love the person to come to Finland and uh, spend the onboarding uh, time here. Of course, it depends on the profession as well as some some areas doesn't need so much uh, kind of like, uh, close uh, proximity in onboarding.
All right, we can take one more question before we move uh, on with the with the agenda. So if there's a question you have, shoot it. If not, please then also it's possible to ask the questions at the Critical Force booth. I hope you have time to look at all of those. Uh, one more. Um, uh, <clears throat> I found a few times <clears throat> my internet goes down and I can't uh, re re I, and I can't rem remote it, but can send messages to my team lead to let them know what's going on. Do you also share phone numbers or, uh, sorry, it's, uh, I think, numbers or some other offline communication method? Yeah, we have several communication methods and uh, we fit the suitable one for the team. If uh, one fails, then we have a backup. And if, uh, if uh, internet fails, then we have phones. Uh, is your company supporting visa and uh, relocation? Yes, we are. All right. With that being said, we're moving on to uh, with the agenda. Thank you very much, Mia, for the excellent presentation. And I'm reminding everyone that you can still reach uh, me and, and, and other Critical Force uh, team members there at the, at the stand. So uh, thank you very much, Mia. Thank you. Bye. All right, we're off the